You are now entering In The Last Days. I am the host of the show, RPI Radio Pastor Isaac. And this is a one-hour show start from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Giving you biblical information coming from the Word of God. And we got a house full tonight. And I tell you what, I'm excited. You know, I'm learning now to, to really hear God. You know, in a situation that sometimes I'll be walking around and, and God speak to me and and he tells me certain things or he gives me certain things. And he like, well, uh, you know, RPI, this is what I want you to do. And I say, yes, Lord. And, you know, sometimes I, I never be the one to try to question God. I never be the one that try to say, OK, God, is this are you sure I just obey the group of people I have in here is is going to bless your soul. Um, I'm not even going to introduce them, them yet. Let me get through my preliminaries. I know y'all anxious out there, especially my radio listening. Y'all always anxious. Y'all like, well, RPI, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And if those who are watching on Facebook, yes, we got a house full. It, and it's it's powerful. I just wish I would record the 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 show before the show. That's when the two anointing hit, but it's going to be the same anointing that's in this place. Uh, if you are listening to us on WCC 99.9, that means you are listening to us on the radio station. Uh, I got a couple ways that you can listen to us. Uh, the first way, you can listen to us um, on, a, uh, on, our, on our internet, which is uh, www.cwchrist.com. I mean, www that is our internet page. That is the page where you can see various pastors or various shows. Uh, also, donate. We would love for you to donate to WCC 99.9. This radio station does not have a, a person that give us money. We all come off sponsors, live shows. So if you want to donate, you can go to that website. And I'm going to say it real slow because people say, all right, pal, you say it so fast. It's uh, w, I mean, www.cwchrist.com. And you can donate and be a blessing to us. Or another way you can go to the internet. And that's right, we're live on the internet. And that uh, straight to streaming. So if you go in the store and say, hey, I don't want to miss what these guys say, you get your smartphone or your tablet and you type in the website um, and it's wcc.streamon.fm. Let me say it one more time. wcc.streamon.fm. That is live on the internet. So we can get, we get listeners as far as Nigeria, Africa, Russia, China, we even got some in France and Paris uh, that, that say they listen in. Uh, of, of Afghanistan, where well, we had a call from Afghanistan, anywhere in the world you can listen. And then too, um, I'm also on Facebook. You can listen to us live on Facebook. I have my page uh, set for uh, Worldwide. My name is Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, last name I-S-A-A-C. So you look it up and you'll see the 99.9 uh, WCC 99.9 icon. That's what I have. So those who want to listen live, you can listen. So today is February. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to February. Today is uh, October the 23rd. And if you listen to October the 25th, which is on a Wednesday, that is our rebroadcast around about 2 o'clock. So we will not be live. Most of the time, that's when we get all the calls in. But um, if you listen around about this time at 2 2 o'clock p.m., which is that'll be October 24th. We are not live. It's a rebroadcast. So, got a house full of people. Got my partner in crime over here. Let him introduce himself. I shouldn't say partner in crime. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Pastor Paxton Riley with Restore Church, uh, 2155, uh, Gordon Highway. Uh, still having services at the conference room, 9 a.m. Right. to 11. Uh, come see us in Augusta, Georgia when you get a chance. <clears throat> Amen. So we, we, we got a house full of people here. And and, and it's it's awesome because walkers out of Kroger's uh on Washington Road and I seen these group of men out there and they had a lot of uh T shirts and Bible stuff and crosses. I'm like, man, you know, I right, what's going on over here? And then I look in it and they are life changing community outreach center. They are a center that help people with addictions. And what really caught RPI, you know, RPI, you know, I'm always looking. I don't just jump on anything. And when I read the back, and I'm going I'm to read the back of it to you now, because this is this is what really caught my eye. It, um, they uh, uh, it say, our program teach morals and values 
from the word of God to help them overcome old behavior, lifestyles, along with providing an environment in which the Holy Spirit moves, empower them to live a new life free. Now, that says, that's a big statement when you get Holy Spirit and the word of God in there. Because most addiction plays, they always talking about, you know, they give them medicine or try to give them something to, you know, get over their addiction. But these brothers here using the word of God. And I got my uh, new friend here, my new brother, brother Jason. He is uh, came all the way down from North Carolina where they have the program. And this program, man, I mean, it is, it's not like any other program where you just go in. It's a 12-month based program where you go through different stages of learning the gospel, talking, you know, you have any addiction of <clears throat> whether whatever it is, drug or anything like that. And Brother Joe, I tell you, I got him. And I, you know what? I'm going to just let them introduce they center. So we're going to start from the, the left and go all the way. Around. Matter of fact, we start from the left, then we go from here, and then we'll save the best for last. I'm Tyler Raines. Hey, Amen. And I'm Eddie Gullett from Bells on the Mississippi. All right. And my, my brother here. I'm Joseph Hagler from Concord, North Carolina. Hey, Amen. So... Joe, is, he's the one that I met, and we got the chance to talk. And we didn't talk long. And the Holy Spirit said, bring him to the show. And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And, man, just what I was hearing uh, in the past 10 or 15 minutes ago, y'all guys going to be blessed. Y'all really going to be blessed. So the name of the, our show is called, it's going to be called Life Change Community Outreach Center. This is the uh, place. And you look the guys up. They are on uh they have a number here, which I'm going to let, let Joe go ahead and introduce himself, let him do the preliminaries of what of Life Change is all about. And he's going to give some of his testimony. And he brought some brothers. I mean, I ain't talking about no brothers just, you know, off the street. These brothers, brothers of Christ, just listen to them. You can tell the word of God is in there. So, Joe, I'm going to let you go ahead and roll, brother. First off, I want to um, just thank the Lord for this opportunity. And uh, Patrick, I want to thank you for, for giving us an opportunity to uh, to come here and just and just let people know that that there is um that God is still alive, that He's still on the move, come on, and now. He still wants to um Amen. set people free. Amen. So um, I come into Life Changers on um, 2017, and, and um, what Life Changers does is like Patrick was telling you that we're a 12 month face based discipleship program and um we just come straight from the word of god we um we want to bring people hope we want to bring them um love we want to let them understand that there's freedom and there's power in the name of jesus christ and we just believe that um if they would just submit to the process and just submit to what he has in store for them their life will be forever changed and um and so a little back history of me i was about a um i got on drugs in 96 in high school i um come from a family that's real supportive they love the lord and um and they did all they could to get me to do right and then there come a point in life to where i had to make decisions on my own and um i got in with the wrong crowd got into uh, doing drugs in high school i um i kept a straight a average so my, my my parents really didn't know much that was going on and um right out of high school i got introduced to um what was called oxycontin um i really didn't know much about it um i had done it it felt good and then i realized how much money was involved in it and so it turned into selling selling drugs getting high and um mm -hmm. 2001 i got into um and um that was like a a rough year for me but um I got in some trouble in Myrtle Beach. Then I got um, into um, some trouble at home. I was looking at 52 years in Concord for conspiracy to wow. traffic opium and heroin by sale and conspiracy to traffic it by uh, possession. And um, in the meantime, all this going on, my mom and dad just kept pouring love, the same love that, that I realized God had gave them. Mm -hmm. And they just kept loving me, supporting me, telling me there was a better way. And um, so God see me through that. Um, um, I didn't change because I, I just, you know, I was giving credit to man saying, man, I got the best lawyer in town. And then um, not too long after that, I was on um, illegal street racing a motorcycle. I had shorts and a T-shirt. Wow. I hit a lady at um <laughs> hit a lady at 106 in shorts uh, and a T-shirt. Nah, you, you was on a motorcycle. Crotch rocket. Crotch rocket. Illegal what? street racing in broad daylight. Now, I'm, so, I, I'm a motorcycle man. What kind of crotch rocket? I was on record? CBR 600, uh, 99 CBR 600 RR built. It had sidewinder exhaust, extended man. 14 inches. It, it, it would get on down the road. And so um, I, I was illegal street racing, showing mm. off for the ladies, thinking I was doing <laughs> something. And this lady ran a stop sign. I hit her in the door at about 100 mile an hour with shorts and a t-shirt. And um, So I can imagine how you 
skin. I, 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 I tell you, I, I can't imagine that. So <laughs> listen, but listen to how good God is. Though I'm going somewhere. Come on, go somewhere with it, brother. So at the last moment, right before I hit the car, I said, "God, if you'll," and that's all I could say. And I hit right. I wake up and I'm down the road in the ditch. Mm. I come walking back up the road. What? And this lady, I got the helmet in my hand, and it was like the lady didn't even see the helmet. She said, I need you to help me get this guy that was on the bike. Him and the bike are under the car. My God. Wow. I said, ma'am, I was on the bike. And she said, I don't think you understand what I'm telling you. The guy on that bike is trapped under this car. And I lifted my hand. I had road rash. And listen, I just had road rash on my hands, a little bit on my knees. And I had to get six stitches in my foot where the foot peg got me. Right? Now, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, shorts and a t-shirt. I had on, I can tell you what I was wearing. I was wearing a pair of Abercrombie and Finch cargo shorts, a white tee, a pair of low cut white socks with the throwback Reebok classics on, is what I was wearing. Now, I done fell off a bike. Now, listen to this. I done fell off. I had a, 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 a Honda 954. Your CVR. CVR. I done fell off. No, it was a Yamaha R6. I fell off that and had pants on, had strawberries all on the side of my leg where it rubbed through my jeans. And you. Man. I had a little bit, look, little bit of road rash, my hands, my knees. I said six inches in my foot. And the lady was like, "Hey, this, you, this guy is on the car, and you up there talking to him." Didn't even see the helmet. <sighs> Boy, I tell you what. They ain't so no, listen, ain't no I God. remember, I remember saying, "God," and that's it. But I turned away. I kept on doing my thing. Right. Back into addiction. Right. Really, really, what I call a foxhole prayer. I said, "God, if you will help me, I change." And then once, once he helped me, I didn't change. And this went on for. Till 2010, in and out of jail. My daughter was my daughter was born in 08. I still couldn't stay clean for her. I, I was trying to do stay clean for everybody but myself. Mm. And 2010, that's the first time I saw my dad cried all. He had a couple of tears coming down his face, and he said, "Your mama's got breast cancer." But um, I want you to know this: this ain't about her. If you if you go back to jail where you don't change your own, your own. That's right. Well, I thought my dad was selling me a wolf ticket, really. My mom's mm. got breast cancer. I figured he was just saying it because, you know, he's dealing with, he's looking at his wife, you know, going through breast cancer. And so um, I, I, I stayed out of jail till 2013. I, I remember I come home. I wasn't living at home. My dad said, son, you can just come back home because see, it, my, my life was so out of control. And mm. my life was so much around shooting heroin, taking Xanax and doing what Joe wanted to do, being nothing but selfish. My own family loved me, but they didn't want me at home. Mm. It, it was it was slowly killing my mom, and I was too selfish and conceited about what I wanted to do to care about the ones that are around me, what they cared about. And so my parents had to draw the line and say, "You can't stay home," which I was good with. You know, when you when you when you got a pocket full of drugs, yeah, you, you don't want to go home. You everybody wanna... your friend. <laughs> That's your home. That's everybody right. your friend. Yeah. That's right. But see, I got locked up in thirteen, and I called my dad and I said, "Listen, out of respect, I don't want you to think I'm dead, so I'm in jail." <clears throat> my dad said, "Don't worry about it." I said, I said, I go in front of a judge tomorrow for a bond. He said, call me tomorrow. So my mindset, I am like, I can sit in jail 12 hours. I'll be home tomorrow. Yeah, daddy going to get me out. Yeah, so I wasn't even worried. You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm going home in the morning. So I go in front of the, um, and see, in the mix of this, sometimes we feel like when, when situations happen that, that we can't control, we don't even take it. We don't even sit back and look. Maybe God set me down in here for a reason. That's right. Because, see, when I went in front of the judge the next day, I had never been locked up in this county. They ain't mm. never even seen me. Wow. And the judge, read, he, he goes to read my name, and he said, I told you last week, if you come back in here, you was done. Well, I'm in a video of Raymond. I really ain't even supposed to speak. And I said, I went to tell him, Your Honor, you ain't never seen me. Hmm. He gave me 10 more thousand on my bond. So now I'm in there under $65,000 bond. And at this point in time, it's one of them situations where there was so many things in my life that I got away with. This is one of the things where I was just with the wrong group of people. Yeah. So now I'm sitting in jail. Got 10 more thousand added to my bond because I'm trying to tell this man you never seen me. So I called my dad, and I'm like, Dad, uh, here's what's going on. I, I got a bondsman that's going to work with me. I just need you to sign a bond. But they says, I ain't signing nothing. <laughs> and, I, and, and he don't hear good. Yeah. And, you know, in jail, the phones are raggedy. Yeah, so, so, he, I said, so I said, put my mom on the phone. She better go. hear me. So my mama gets on the phone. I tell her the same thing. And my mom said, we ain't coming to get you. We made an agreement to God that if you got locked back up, you was on your own. My mom said, but I tell you what we did tell we're going to give you $100 a week for canteen, and you got all the money on the phone you can use. But if, if you depending on us to get out, you got to figure it out on your own. Wow. That's right. So for five days, I was ticked off. I, I was I – was, 
cussing. I was yeah, mad, but, mad. But can I tell you, I didn't even I didn't even take time to say, God, help me. I really wasn't even that dope sick in jail, you know. And, and so at the moment in my darkness, I still didn't really understand that even though drugs had a hold on me, it was more held on my mind yeah. than my spirit. Yeah. Because my mind knew I wasn't getting out of jail. So there's no need for my mind to dwell on my next high because I was stuck. That's right. right. And so I remember saying, and there's another foxhole prayer. God, if you'll let the truth come out, <laughs> I like I'll that. change. Fox prayer. And um, so <laughs> like about the sixth day in there, I'm talking to my folks, you know, and, and they're going to come to court and stuff. And uh, my dad tells me, <clears throat> you could hear his voice crippling. He says, son, you don't know how bad these last five days have been. Hmm. Knowing I had a, the, not only did you didn't really need no money, but knowing I had a financial ability to bond you out. And I had to tell you, no, he said, you don't understand. This was harder on me than you. That's right. So I sit in jail for 30 something days, go in front of a judge, and I talk my way out of jail on house arrest. I convince the judge that if, 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 I'm, if I'm guilty, I'll do the whole time, but if I'm not, I'm free, and he agreed. So not even, not even really caring, I was just trying to get out to get high. Right. So they put me on house arrest, and the first thing I did was go get high. I can leave from six in the morning to six at night. So at 6.01 I leave, I'll be back about 5.50. That's wow. what I did. So for a week, that's what I did. So my dad calls me on a Wednesday and says, uh, you need to come meet me. You got to go turn yourself in. I'm like, there ain't no way. I'm going to cut this monitor off and run. You know, I got caught in the morning. Not knowing that my mom had been on her knees praying. Mm. Not knowing that, that all these people that I thought was crazy because all they wanted to do was tell me there's a better way. God loves you. Right. you, you God's got a purpose and a plan for your life. And this purpose and plan is not for you to be stuck in addiction. Not knowing that all these people was making sacrifices on their own time, making sacrifices away from their own family to stand in the gap for me, who I was convinced I was nothing, who I was convinced nobody loved me, who I was convinced that I was just going to be a dope addict for the rest of my life, not realizing they was taking time in their prayer closet for me. So I walk in. I walk in that Wednesday, and and and, and the bailiff says, "I need your monitor." Mm. And I'm like, "Man, you can't get it." They told me I got to work till tomorrow, tomorrow. He said, "Well, you can give me fifteen hundred dollars and keep it if you're not giving it to me." I said, "No, you can have it." <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so I walk in court. Boom! They, I'm 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 free. <clears throat> Done. State the state took a dismissal. But I do remember saying, "God, I'll go to treatment if you make the truth come out." So I honored, I honored what I said to him for once. Right. But I wasn't serious. See, I felt like that I owed him me to go to treatment mm -hmm. to, to justify and pay for what he did for me on the cross. Come on now. Because I didn't really understand that it's not by my works at the moment in my addiction. Right. So I was trying to get to heaven by, okay, God, I told you I'd go. I'm just going to go. Mm -hmm. Thinking I could work my way in there. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a place that, that, that God spoke with me there, but I, I, I made compromises. See, I don't think that... um. I know I didn't, that we don't really understand compromise. We don't. <laughs> because if we did understand compromise, we wouldn't do it. Come on, Amen. brother. See, 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 right see, there, we, we want to, myself included, so y'all please understand when I say y'all, I'm speaking to myself too. See, we want to go to church on Sunday, but then Monday when we, when, 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 when we wake up and we don't feel like going to work because we really don't understand the enemy put the fatigue in our mind to convince us we're tired. That's right. We want to turn it on some rap music and uh -huh. listen, to some, mm -hmm. listen to some Young Jeezy or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then as soon as we go to church, we're ready to put a suit on and be the first one at the altar lifting our hands saying, thank you, Lord. That's right. <laughs> you step, and, you're stepping and, on some toes, and, bro. And, and see, what, what God spoke to me about was <laughs> it don't matter what I do in front of the preacher. It That's matters right. what I do That's when I'm by myself. That's Come on right. now. That's, That's right. right. See, true see what I do by myself is going to be a reflect of what I do when situations get rough. Come on now. See, when, when, when pressure begins to come on my life and, and the enemy's coming at my family or he's coming at my job or he's coming at me, see, what I do by myself is going to be a reflection of when stuff gets tough. Because, see, if I don't spend that quiet time with the Lord and seek him to, to really understand that he's for me and he's not against me, mm -hmm. and that really the battle that the enemy is trying to give on me, I've already won, so I can walk into victory. See, if I don't spend time with the Lord, I don't even know that, I, that, that the price has already been paid. I don't even, I, I don't even know right. that I can walk Woo! in victory. That's right. Come on now. But, see, it took, mm. it took me a long time to get to where I am. But, see, the reason I got here is by God's grace and me spending time in the Word. But, see, I come into Life Changers and... Um, and, and 
and well, I left Hebron and, and I compromised the whole time talking to females when you're not supposed to because yeah. see they tell me I couldn't use the phone to talk to females but there was nobody there watching me when I was on the phone that's right so see my true my true belief in the Lord and my true integrity showed I was the one at the church praising the Lord when it was time to go to church service mm -hmm. but when I got a phone call on Saturday and Sunday the first thing I'm doing is calling a female that I got no business talking to that's still stuck in addiction that the only reason I was with her was for selfish gain to sleep with her and to get everything I could from her see I was the one in the church that's why I know what it's like mm. amen Man, and so that's, I went, that's true. I went, that's true right I went, there. I went in and out of treatment doing that, making compromises, you know, and, 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 and it really didn't hit me till I was backed in a corner and my mom has got six months to live. And now I have to do something with my life. Mm. And when I'm, when I'm facing this, this, um, what, what by the natural we would say was a disaster. Yeah. That's what it's but, uh, if you if you stand on God's promises and you stand on his word, it tells us in Romans that all things work to good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's right. So, see, it don't matter what my natural flesh looks like. That's right. <laughs> see, what matters is what my spirit looks like. So, That's even right. though by the natural, I'm looking at my mom dying by the natural. But, see, I also understood enough that. The doctor don't have a final say so when my mom Come on, goes come on, brother. Because in April of 2016, they said you won't <laughs> live past Halloween of 16. Well, today is what? October 22nd, 2018. <laughs> right. I spoke to my mom about four hours ago on my way here. Come on now. My God. So, in the mix of me coming to Life Changers, I remember... See, people, you know, a, a lot of churches want to say, oh, you, you should forget your past. Yeah, I shouldn't dwell on my past, That's but right. I should also remember what God's brought me from. That's right. Your past because is a reflection of, of with, with, where you're coming from, where you're at. Because right. once, I, once you remember mm -hmm. where God's brought you from, when the next time you got to go through the valley, you got enough hope and strength to carry you because on, you now. know he's going to take you to the mountain. <laughs> that's right. Because the same God that's on the Woo! mountain is the same God in the valley. That's right. You know, nowhere in the Bible does it say he's just on the Bible, on the mountain. It says, I will never leave you nor, nor forsake, forsake you. That's right. So that's if right. he's with me on the mountain, he ain't going to leave me in the valley by myself. Same he's going to go with me. That's you. right. That's right. And so as I came into Life Changers, I remember saying, God, I just need two things. If you'll, if you'll take this dope sickness from me. And you'll let my mama live to see me do right. Mm. I promise you I won't go back. Now you're talking from somebody that was a about an 18-year heroin addict, about a 13-year IV user that shot as much dope as he could, that ran dope for the cartel. So I had as wow. much dope as I wanted. Come my on God. now. Man. I didn't even go through detox. Mm. And I just want to make sure y'all hear me to make sure there was no interruption. <laughs> I didn't even go through no detox. Amen. My God. I cried out and said, God, if you'll take the sickness Woo, from me on, and let my mama live, I won't go back. Mm. February 22nd, 2017, I woke up not dope sick. So, mm. see, see, people can say, oh, you was free. No, I was delivered mm -hmm. because, see, I was free from jail plenty of times when I bonded out, but I ended up going back. But, see, once God delivered me, there was no need to go back. Because once he delivered me from the addiction, right. I wasn't free for the moment. I was truly delivered. That's right. And it made me understand that when Romans 12, 2 says, you must be transformed by the renewing of your yes, mind. mind. Come in, on, in, brother. In the, in, in, in the event of him delivering me, my mind began to be renewed, understanding that as long as I keep my trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it don't matter what comes against me. He will carry me on because Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. That's mm. it. Come he on, has man. a future. And a destiny. <laughs> but, see, but see, what what's, what's taking place is the church makes people believe their destiny is salvation. <laughs> Our destiny is not salvation. It's, once you get to salvation, that's where your life begins. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because that's when it starts. So many, so many wow. people want to get you to salvation mm, and leave mm, you. Mm. That's not being a disciple. A disciple is teaching them. Letting them understand the word of God. Because if I lead you to the Lord, what benefit is you if you don't understand the warfare's coming? And that's, and that, I don't mean to cut Amen. you off, but that's you one of the brother. biggest things you saying is discipleship. That's right. And see, listen, and WUCC 99 point listening, Facebook, I hope y'all listening. Because you listen at this, I mean, so much power. And this is coming out of a, a, a drug rehab program. They ain't nothing but the state, but the word of God. And this is, man, I tell you, you bless my heart, brother. Man, you bless mine. You bless my heart because a lot of people have drug addiction that is so bad, and 
they don't went into these program after programs. I got a bro- I got a brother that was was on drugs to God free him. I got another brother doing uh, uh, seventy five years for triple homicide. Then I got another brother right now that's that's in, in New York that's not doing good. So I know how it is to go back and in and out of programs. I watched my parents try to get them out. I watched my mama have three strokes in one month from one of my brothers because he was doing so much that I like to kill her. But then at the same time, I see my mother get on her knees and say, you know what, God, I hand them to you. And when I listen at you, brother, it, it makes me go back thinking, man. I wish this program was around the time doing my brother was going through this because this will really bless their heart. Man, this is this is this is something that is so awesome. Life, life changing community outreach. When he gets finished telling his testimony, I'm gonna have him give him all the information because I know some of our listeners have family members that's on drugs or have children. And right now, man, with this drug epidemic going on with this uh, fit felon, fentanyl, fentanyl, yeah, where it's taken right now, it's so bad in Augusta, man. I mean, they talking about 82 cases. Wow. Of children dying. It's so bad that the, the schools got to put uh, the thing that put in your chest when you get an overdose. Narcan. Narcan. They got to put them in the school so because these kids overdosing. Wow. And they're not pushing it. They trying to figure out. They say this drug is so strong that it, it takes the elephant out. And if you put your hand on it, you will fall out. And this is what's going on. So in Augusta, it's bad. And I got my brother Joseph here. Man, he is giving a testimony. For, man, just go ahead. I'm, I'm going to just let you go ahead. I, Facebook going crazy over here. Just go ahead. Go ahead. And so, I, I don't want to leave the rest of them. I want y'all to get in, but I'm going to let, let, let my, my brother Joe go ahead. And so, um, you mm. know, God God used Woo. life changers to, to really let me see what really life was about. Because, see, as, as I was in my addiction, all I was was selfish. And so all I could give somebody was selfish ambition. But see, once I came into Life Changers and I started to understand that God loved me, that he had a purpose and plan for my life, that, that when the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man in Christ, he is a new creation, old things have passed away, behold, all. Things come. It don't say some, it says all. all things. So if everything's become new, I have to allow God to transform my mind to where everything about me becomes new. See, it don't matter what the world sees me as. Because the world, I guarantee you, would tell you I was hopeless. I was a drug addict. I never amounted to nothing. And and when I started to understand that, see, also, also, really, what um what we don't understand is we don't understand that when we speak something, whether that person hears it or not, it's still in the atmosphere. That's right. Because the Bible talks about power and death in the tongue. Mm-hmm. And, and, and 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 it took me a long time to understand. That even if, even if I'm gossiping to Patrick about somebody else and they don't hear it, it's still in the atmosphere. That's, That's right. <laughs> Come on. And see, the enemy will use that. Ooh. He'll use that against you Man. because any way he can get to the person he wants to get to. And so we just what what really ha- has has going on is and 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 if I offend somebody, I apologize, but I got to shoot you straight because that's the way the word of God is. It's straight. But the issue that we have is so many people want to want to proclaim their speaking speaking truth, but they sugarcoat it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because see, everybody wants new wine poured into them, mm-hmm. but they don't want the they don't want the pressing and and and, and, and the process that goes with it. That's right. See, we want we we want to we want to we want to get new water in our glass. And pour it out, but we don't want to clean the glass on the inside. That's we right. we want to dress ourselves up pretty That's on right. the, We want to dress ourselves up pretty on the outside, <laughs> and, and and act like we got everything going on in life. But on the inside, we like a landfill full of trash. That's it. <laughs> That's right. And so That's and so That's as good. and so as, as anybody can walk into church with a suit and tie on. Anybody can stand up there and, and lift your hands. But but what do you do if we're supposed to be a servant? What do you do when somebody needs something? Mm. Do, you, do you pawn it off on somebody else? Mm. Or do you say, oh, I got to go watch football today. See if the world would get so excited about Jesus Christ that they do the football about, about, about on, NFL. On, if if, mm. if the mm. world would get mm. so mm. excited mm. About, about NASCAR racing or Come football on, or now. baseball or NBA or, right. about, or about what the Kardashians are doing or what or what Michael <laughs> Jordan's doing or what all these people are doing, if they would get so excited about Jesus Christ the way we do, the way they do the things of the world, you wouldn't have to worry about revival. Revival would automatically break out because we would be so into with the Lord right. Jesus on, Christ man. that everywhere we went 
Everybody, the sick will be the sick will be healed. Come on, now. The, the, the people that the world says addicted to the drugs, the, the, the addiction will just fall off because we will be so in tune with the Lord, His His presence and His healing power and His authority will just fall off onto us on them. But see, we so quick to we so quick to want to gamble on a on a football game. Mm -hmm. I'll because, play the lottery, get on that too. <laughs> because we want to we want to act like we're doing something, and, and, and you win the lottery and you say, "Oh, I paid my tithes." You should have gave it all to the church. Mm. All right. You, I want to say been. this: If you can get one point six billion dollars to a lottery, you can get that to different churches. Ooh. But then you got people here complaining. Well, they, all they do is take your money and do. And what you think the lottery do? Yep. Because you got to sit in the church. You got to have air conditioning. You won't pay the seats. Go to Africa where I went, where there's no air conditioning. Bring your own chair. You know what I'm saying? Sit on the patio. You know what I'm saying? Then you, you there's no bathroom now. You have to go to our house. That's right. But we'll sit up there and play, and it was sickening. To no see deal. those people, and I listen to what you're saying, brother. I mean, it's it just, it's just sickening. You know, well, I'm gonna play. I ain't playing nothing. All I'm playing is Jesus. That's Amen. it. I, I had somebody ask me one time a few years ago, was I playing a lot of? I said I already hit. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. what, that right. that what you mean, man. I said I got saved, brother. <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, Jesus is my way out, man. Amen. Huh? I didn't need no ticket, man. No, I, I got don't it. need no ticket. I don't need nothing to win. I don't need nothing. To, I, listen, I won, man. My my my, my Jesus is is more worth than one point six billion. They can't. They ain't got a number for my Jesus. Mm -mm. They can't. Even, they ain't even got a number for him. As long as I keep living. And see, this is what I love when I'm listening to Joseph here giving this. Listen, I mean, y'all listen how powerful on fire that this brother is. That used to be on drugs. That used to went to almost died in an accident, and look how he bring a word. This is this is what we need in Augusta. We need we need we need we need life changing outreach here in Augusta because if this man can get so in tune in the gospel and on the word of God, then imagine, imagine how many drug addicts will be on the street corners out witnessing and winning souls to Christ. Amen. I mean, Amen. that's right. I mean, listen to him, man. I'm, I'm amazed. He's powerful, man. Just so, so, uh, and, and and what I see, and, and, and I'm just gonna kind of piggyback and get with you on on this too, Joe. Sure. Is is um, people are not experiencing God in the churches that they're going to. That's right. That's right. And there's a difference in knowing about Him and experiencing. Right. You had an experience. You had an yes, experience. Sir. So that's what changed Paul's life. Come on now. Paul, guess what? Paul knew the word. He knew the law. He, he knew, knew to the letter. Had the right. best teacher in the world. But guess what? When he had an when he had a, a, a interrupted trip by Jesus Christ, everything about him, like he said, everything changed, and he was just on just as on fire for Jesus' gospel as he was for the law. Exactly. So, so I can guarantee you now, Joe. I just met Joe today, and I can guarantee y'all that Joe was just as on fire about them drugs, about that dope, that, as that he dope. is right now. So God doesn't so much want to change you for you to change your whole character. He wants to use your character for a different purpose. Ooh, so you can work for him. Right. Yeah. So, he, so, so people are scared That's to right. give their life to Christ because they think somebody wants to, they, they think God just want to change them and change everything about them. They can't have fun. They can't do this. They can't do that. But, but God shows you a different way because he transforms your mind by the renewing and he'll use you the same way mm. but just for his purpose, man. And that's what we have to understand that God created us the way we are when we come out of the womb. But if we choose a different path, he'll still use us for what he created us for once we give our life back. Once to we him. give it. And one of the things that Jesus said, he, he, he was talking to the scribes and the Sadducees, he said, lawyers, doctors, prostitutes will get to God before you will. Ooh, Didn't God. he say that? Come on, that's right. Because he said that he knew they'd be hungry. See, what's wrong with us, Christian? We ain't hungry no more. No. No. Right. Well, we, we'll get a, a little bit of, uh, we'll get this little bit and we'll go in and gossip. Listen, that's just the beginning. I got a whole plate of stuff that you No, I'm, I'm good right here. And then we'll sit right there. That's why the church is falling apart. That's why Joe couldn't go to the church. Now, and I'm not killing the church now. There's a lot of church that preaching gospel, but he couldn't, he had to go somewhere where he get true gospel. Not that old fake stuff that make you feel good. Not that old Joe Osteen and that Cleft Little Nickel and that, uh, 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 T.D. Snakes. He ain't getting none of that. Yeah. He ain't getting that. I know some of y'all get mad because of, but they ain't preaching the he truth. Ain't preaching the truth. Here it is. You got a you man get... here that was on drugs. Hey, Amen. And them places like Joe Steen should have bigger places, have programs to teach the gospel. But no, he had to go somewhere else. And God, get, I mean, to listen to him be on fire like this, man, this ain't, man, this is, this ain't nothing but a miracle. This is something the world needs to this hear. This is something the world needs to hear. And, and I, man, y'all ought to see him every day. Thank you, Jesus. God, Amen. I thank you for me listening because. Amen. If I never would have walked past you and never would have did, I would have missed out on what God had today. And brother, you are touching some hearts. Amen. 
You I'm, touching some hearts today, cause people need to hear that. Man, I got a lot of people that that family friend that listen to race. They have people on uh, hearts. They on drugs. They sprung out and just because I had addiction to porn. Yo, you shouldn't say, hey, I'm porn ain't my master mode. Jesus is, so I'm not Amen. ashamed of it. Amen. Because Jesus took the shame from me. Amen. So I shouldn't be never ashamed right. of nothing that God freed me from. Amen. And it should be a testimony to That's go right. out. And tell people, listen, there's a way out, just like Amen. you're doing. It's power. He, man, this is raw power we listen to. Amen. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm want to get. I want. I want to get them chance to speak too, man. But I'm gonna go ahead and let you finish on. We, you don't got us so excited, man. I mean, <laughs> so um, mm. you know, and and, and you, I don't, I don't know the Bible front to back, but it says in there that we have to call four things that are not so as though they are. That's right. And so, see, if everybody wants the world to change, but they don't want to do their part to change it. Yes. Because see, if we all if we all hit our knees and we start calling and, and we start calling this drug epidemic that it ain't got no power, mm -hmm. and we start using the authority of God's given us, and we start calling porn, you got no authority. If we start claiming victory over every area in this world, over shootings, over addictions, over overdoses, over lust, over Amen. adultery, over everything, if we start calling forth the things that are not so as, as though they are. We wouldn't have to worry about. We wouldn't have to worry about a church because see, so many people want to want to act like we that, that the building's a church. No, if you save you the church. That's right. The that's church right. is where your feet go. The that's church. Right. The, the, yeah. the, 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 what people call a church is just a building where we gather. See, when when I'm on the road and I'm out here and I'm out here doing what I love so much because God delivered me every 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 time I get an opportunity to fundraise. I don't look at this about the money. I look for a divine appointment to let that one person hear. Hey, there's hope. Hey, I let that Come one on person now. here. There's a better way because see, what good is it for me to be delivered if I can't pass it on to the next person? That's right. And, and 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 we all we we all so mm. quick to judge a drug addict. Come we on, all, now. We, we all we Come also on now. Say that. we all so quick to say, oh, he still he, he sell drugs because he drives this and he drives that. How about pray for him? That's, That's right. right. <laughs> How about turn your gossip into the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. And, st and, and start sharing truth mm. with the brother? Instead of looking at my outer appearance, how about spend five minutes with me? Let me give you some of the spiritual appearance that I got inside. Come let on, let me give you some of this fire that I have inside and quit judging me because I dress a certain way. I drive a certain vehicle. But better yet, how about quit gossiping and get in the gospel because then you'll have something positive to talk about. Mm. Because, see, we so quick to, to want to say, oh, that man's homeless. <laughs> Can I tell y'all something? Church. Everybody listening, can I tell y'all something? As much as much as, as much as you was touched this weekend, mm -hmm. we had a lady come out of Kroger, and God spoke to me after all this happened. Uh -huh. She had nothing but two pennies. Amen. Now I want y'all to hear this. I said two pennies. Mm. So the question I have is: all these people that hit the lottery, all these people that making six figures a year, you ain't making no sacrifice by putting five dollars in my bucket. <laughs> Come I on. hate to tell you, a sacrifice is pain. Amen. A sacrifice Come is on, giving brother. up something that you don't need. It don't do me no good to give you $5 if I got $10 million. Mm. That ain't no sacrifice. That's Come right. on now. This lady gave not only two cents, but she walks off and she comes back and says, all I got is some cereal. Will you take it? My God. Wow. Some cereal, y'all, and y'all and, and y'all want to look at us and tell me to get a job. I don't need a job. God gives me everything I need. If you trust him. <clears throat> My God. And this, it's and it's like and it's like, you know, one thing I want to emphasize on life changers, we're free. <laughs> no government funded. <laughs> My God. No income. Come on now. Wow. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down, slow down. Say that one more time now. Say that one more the, time. The, the government don't help us. Mm. We don't accept insurance. All we want is a broken vessel willing to lay every broken piece of their life down at the altar and say, God mold me back together. Amen. Wow. That's, that's powerful. Woo. So, that's so my thing is, everybody's so quick to play the lottery mm. and do all these things. I want you to tell me where you can go to a gas station and get free gas. Can't <laughs> you can't? Tell that ain't don't, don't even let me start on that. I just came from Panama <laughs> City last weekend yeah. where the hurricane. Don't it, man? Go ahead. And man. so, mm. so get me started on gas. So, man. where can you? You can't go to the steakhouse and eat for free. No. no. And even and even if they gave you a free meal, that addiction, your life, your fails. Your failures, you put that commitment in God, God gonna make a way. And I just I'm just hearing something that's literally blowing my ears off. And I I, I mean I wanna I wanna try to get them to come down to the church or something, you know. Get them, I mean this is this is powerful. This is very powerful. All right, my brother. First of all, I wanna say thank you, Pastor Isaac and Pastor Riley, for uh, letting us come to your show, man. Hey, to God it's be really glory. a blessing, brother. It really is, man. I'm my name's Eddie. 
and I'm from Belzona, Mississippi. And I was a policeman back in Belzona. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Indianola, Mississippi, I'm an ex-police. Wow. A lawman. Lawman. And while I was uh, in my little tour of duty, I ended up having to take somebody's life one night. Mm. One afternoon. The fellow had committed an armed robbery. It was all justified on my part and everything, but that led me down it led me down the road of drinking. Finally got out of law enforcement, got back to smoking weed again, then I found cocaine. Wow. And now before all this, man, you know, I was I made a shift commander real quick. Man. I made investigator real quick. Wow. And then I was head of narcotic division. Wow. wow. Man, look at this. <laughs> so <clears throat> But after this happened, I didn't know what to do, you know, and I was, uh, you know, I was kind of like Jonah. I mean, it was just like Jonah, you know, uh, Jonah, he, he was running from God. You know, God had called me to the ministry a long time ago, uh -huh. and I turned my back, and I ran. And, you know, when Jonah was called and God had something for him to do, he went down to the water. That's right. And he went down, and then not only did he go down, he got down there and got in the boat and then went down in the belly of the boat. And that's right. <laughs> he that's keeps right. going down. So that's then right. they... They kicked him off the boat, and the whale swallowed him up, and he went down even farther. That's Woo! right. That's Come good stuff. That's, that's good stuff, Eddie. Come on See now. what I'm saying? He kept going down, 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 down. But what happened to him? He got spit out in Nineveh. That's right. Just like I did. I got spit out in Bells on it. My Come mom's on, house. Eddie. Come on, Eddie. Come on now. Woo! My God. And every time I'd go back out there, running and gunning and doing what Eddie wanted, I got spit right back out. Mm. Every time, every time I tried to do it my way, God said, that ain't what I want you to do. That's simply not what I want you to do. So mm -hmm. this time around, I decided that I was going to just pay attention to what God wanted me to do. And I was talking to my best friend's dad, which my best friend had passed away in a car wreck mm -hmm. about seven years ago. And his dad was a Church of God preacher. So I called Brother Dave. And I said, Brother Dave, what you doing tomorrow? He said, oh, I ain't doing nothing. I'm just taking off tomorrow. I said, well, I was thinking about riding over there to see you. And he lived over in Lena, uh, close to uh, Carthage, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. He said, well, come on. He said, you get around here, get over here by lunchtime. He said, I'll take you to eat. So here I am driving. I go through Canton, Mississippi. Go downtown through Canton. And on the other side of Canton, Mississippi, I just had this vision in my mind about a place to go to. Now, mind you, two weeks before that, I'm at my mother's house and I was at church. Mm -hmm. And I stepped out finally. And I went down there and I told the congregation and these people that knew I had a drug problem, knew I was an alcoholic, knew all this stuff. Mm -hmm. These people, I didn't want to confess, uh, to jump out there and tell them that I had decided to join the ministry. That's not what I wanted to tell them people. But mm -hmm. man, God put me out there. And I walked down to the front and I told the preacher, I said, preacher, look, I've been running. And I said, God wants me to be in the ministry. And and I'm ready to, I'm ready to give it all up. So... That happened before I went to Canton to see Brother Dave. But on the other side of Canton, on Highway 22, I had a vision about a place to go to. Mm -hmm. There was a discipleship program. Come on. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I, get to, I finally go to get to Canton. I mean, God just puts this image in my mind of a place to go that I can stay and go and learn about Jesus, get close to God. Mm -hmm. So I go to Canton, Mississippi, to Lena, and Brother Dave and I go to lunch. And, on the, and, and we come back, and we're sitting on his porch, and he was telling me about a boy that was in this program. And I said, Dave, you know, that's kind of funny. I had a vision about this coming over here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I said, well, you know, that fella never called me about that job. He said, you know, I don't think uh, that's what God wants you to do is go to that job. He said, let me make a phone call. Next thing you know, I'm at Life Changers. Never heard about it before. I had no idea that it had anything to do with drug, rehab, whatever. I thought it was just a one year long discipleship program. Uh -huh. And here I am, an ex police officer, and I get put right in the middle of a bunch of convicts. Amen. A bunch of drug addicts. That's right. Even wow. though I've had drug problems mm -hmm. and alcohol problems, mm -hmm. but I get put right here. I give up everything I own my dishes, my clothes, my truck. I wow. give everything away, dropped everything I had. And I told my mother, I said, I got to go somewhere. She said, Where are you going? I said, I'm going to North Carolina. I said, I give my life to God, and I said, I'm tired of running, and this is what I'm doing. I've been here for two weeks, and I love it. It has been a blessing. I've been on only two fundraisers, and the second one, I met you. That's right. You met me. And your kids. <laughs> That's right, oh, my man. babies. That's right. 
And I tell you what, it's been a, it's been a blessing. And and, to, and and Tyler and Joe, y'all y'all hear how powerful Joe is right here. But look, he's with us every day. So y'all have no idea what life changer is doing. And there's, he's not the only one in this program that's powerful. It's so many of them. Yeah, yes. amen. To have a testimony. And I tell you something else. The last go around, my wife and I had split up. We was living down on the coast in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Because of all the running, we got to doing some meth, and we split up. We split. I didn't think we was ever going to be together again, but you know what? My wife is a student in Life Changers right now. She's in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. She's a week and a day behind me. We'll graduate this program at the same time. Next Glory year. be to God. Amen. Man. And she and Man, I have had a, uh, we have had a vision in our mind since we've been married. We've been married for eight years. Mm-hmm that we would be involved in a facility such as this. And God seemed fit to put us where we're at right now to go through this. Wow. God's powerful. I tell you what, and yes. Life Changers is an awesome, awesome, awesome. I can't tell you, God has really blessed this program. Wow. It really has. And, and I can see the, the fruits of, of the labor, Brother Joe, that you and, and the program have done. I, I can tell just by... Listen at these guys and, and what God is doing in life, and and this is needed. I mean, this is needed. I mean, and I'm honored. Like, I mean, I'm honored, and I I just give God glory because Amen. I was able to hear Him. And you know, sometimes we 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 feel like we got to concentrate. Oh Lord, let me, you know, pray here. I didn't concentrate. I was chasing my kids. Uh, Eddie would tell, you, "Come back over here, Brianna." I thought she was running off and come back. And I heard God say, "Bring them to the radio station." I said, "Okay, Lord." That's what I heard. And I just came and told I said, listen, man, I want y'all to come down. And that's really unusual for me because I don't just bring anybody here because, you know, this, you know, radio station and everything. But I am honored because what I heard today and what my spirit on the inside of me is giving praise. Amen. To a program that I never heard of, but listen to fruits of the labor, listen to the word of God. Man, you can't get no better than this. Amen. Amen. Then come out being a disciple. And be so on fire. Because see, a lot of these programs, they don't have on fire for God. Then you be on fire to, to be inspired, but you got to have God to keep yourself. Hey, listen, I had a porn addiction over 20 something years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It almost destroyed my marriage. Ooh. To the point where my wife said, I can't deal. You you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, Lord, Lord. You know, even, even before it was addiction, before I met my wife, but I brought it in. But when it, I mean, when it actually manifested, you know, and see that demonic spirit go around in my home and mm. different things. I mean, and I thank God to this day for my wife. We just celebrated 16 years of marriage. Amen. Wow. Amen. We only dated for eight months, four wow. months uh, engaged. I mean, four months date, four months engaged, and we just did 16 years. And, man, I seen God move in my life. Never thought I would be going to another country out of America. Never thought I'd be at a radio station. Never, I can't even, I mean, I can barely, I mean, I ain't going to say I can barely talk, but I get tongue twist in real country. I say, yay, nay, nay, and how you doing? And you know what I'm saying? I hear most of yes, this is WUC. You know, I just, and flow, and for them guys to sit here and give me a voice to be on the radio show, radio station and have people like Joe and, uh, and other people come in, pastor here to come in and share their truth, you know, that is awesome. Amen. And I am honored. I ain't honored. So Joe, <clears throat> I just got one more, one more. Keep on going, brother. We we gonna we gonna we gonna bust another fifteen minutes okay. on it. Right here in uh First Corinthians thirteen, it oh, says uh, Oh yeah, that's my favorite. And it? though I have the gift of prophecy mm. and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Wow. Amen. And God spoke to me on this the other day. And, and for so long in my life, I had so many people that want to classify me as a drug addict, want to classify me as this. But see, as you read that word right there, it don't say that you get to choose who you love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it said, if I have not love, I am nothing. It don't, say, it don't say that you can love the people that go to the church. It's talking about the same way you love your preacher. You should have that much more love for the drug addict. Come on now. Don't the, the, the same way you want to love your preacher or, or your mama, you should have the same love towards that man holding a sign at the road. Come on because, now. Because see, we all just we all just one mistake from that's, being homeless. That's it. There we, you go. We all just one disobedient move from being an addict. 
My God. Because see, just because you love the Lord, if you ain't obedience, you disobedient. That's and right. disobedience is going to bring everything against what God wants you to have. Amen. <laughs> Because, see, as, 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 I, as I get in God's word and, and see Romans 1. All right, we got a call yes, here. This is 99.9. You're live on the air. Question or comment? A comment. God bless you, uh, Elder Isaac. Yes. It's Elder Tolliver. Hey, Pastor Tolliver, how you doing? Straight Gate uh, Church. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Doing well. Just wanted to comment real quick. That's okay. That's all right, brother. Go ahead and comment. Hey, I want to tell y'all, fellas, uh, y'all, man, y'all are blessing us today. I really appreciate y'all being on there. I caught, I think I caught the uh, middle of, is it, is it Mr. Joe? Yes, yeah. sir. I uh, caught, caught your comment, and I'm telling you, man, I, I don't, I, I, I got to get you on, I got to get y'all on our broadcast as well, but y'all are really helping tonight, you know, especially the comment you said, what was it, um, uh, life and death, power to tongue, Yes, and sir. when we go gossip, we gossip. It's still there, still in the atmosphere. Mm. I've never thought about that before, <laughs> never, sir. And I came and told my wife, I ain't going to repent because of some things that you know we we said we might have talked about in secret corners, but it's still there. Amen. I'm telling y'all, really bless my soul today. Really bless my soul. Y'all keep it up. I'll prayer fly be able to, you know, uh, uh, get some information, talk with y'all soon. But y'all keep up the good work. Y'all really blessing us. Today. God bless you, sir. Can, can I give you my personal number? No, no, I won't oh, give I, it on the air. I um, I do it. We don't want no. I we don't yeah. want no. We still got some crazies out here. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm gonna get information. Gotcha. And Sorry um, about that. on Facebook, no, and you all right? You all right? I just didn't want you to have people calling you and doing all kind of stuff. I, yeah. I did that one time. It wasn't didn't do too good. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. My brother got my information. Uh, preference going and pass along to you. All right, Pastor Tyler, we sure do thank you for calling the Pastor Paula Straight Game McCormick, South Carolina. Great man of God I have. This brother here, he be on fire. He do street ministry set up. Got a, a show he does uh, every Tuesday at 9 o'clock called Pastor's Corner. Hmm. And I tell wow. you, it will bless your heart. And, man, we thank you for calling him, Pastor. Yes, sir. God bless y'all. All right. All right. And um, I tell you what, let's go ahead and do this. It's 8 o'clock. Um, I'm going to do, you all been listening to WCC 99.9. I am the uh, host of the show, RPI, and I, my co-host, Pastor, Pastor Praxton Rowland. And this is part two of uh, uh, life-changing outreach. Uh, we got uh, my brother here, Brother Joe, Brother Eddie. Tyler. Tyler here. And they came all the way from North Carolina, and, and it's been powerful. It really has been powerful. Just giving y'all a, a recap of what we've been talking about today in the drug addiction program uh, from the word of God leading by the Holy Spirit and I tell you if you listen to it if you listen to it and you see what God is doing and these disciples because the Bible says go out preach the gospel baptize in the name of Jesus to the highways and bottom these brothers are doing it and I just truly am honored to be amongst brothers that's doing great discipleship um, I'm going to let him Give some more information again, the number and all. So those of you that have family members that have addiction or have issues in their lives, a place they can go to where you know they're not only going to get cured, but learning the word of God. Because without the word of God, without Jesus appear, we can't function. So go ahead, Brother Joe, get the information out so, one more time. Uh, so the name is uh, Life Changers Outreach, and um, the phone number is 828-713-8948. And the uh, website is www.lifechangersoutreach.com. Hey Amen. I'm a, when I get home, I'm going to post that on my, um, my Facebook page so people can get it on here. But, uh, Joe, you was telling us about, you know, what, about people, how they judge drug this and all. I want you to pick up where you left off at. Yeah, so, so I just read uh, 1 Corinthians 13. But it was talking about it don't matter what I do, paraphrasing, if I don't have love, I have nothing. Mm -hmm. And so it's like um, so so many churches want, want the ones to come in that's easy to minister to. Mm -hmm. See, they want to be a servant with standards. Mm -hmm. They, they want to be, be a servant of Christ with mm -hmm. stipulations. Because, see, really, really a true servant is to go bring the prostitute to church. 
That's it's right. really to go bring the drug addict to church. It's really to go minister to the homeless. It, it ain't no being. It, it, you're not being a servant by 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 the church by the, the church choir leader coming every Sunday. That ain't being a servant because you open the church doors. No, <laughs> being a servant is going to get those ones That's that right. everybody has turned their back on. Because see, whether we believe it or not, we all was that one that God left a ninety nine for to go get. Amen. That's right. Whether mm -hmm. you believe it or not, we all was that one. So my thing is. Why do we not want to leave the church to go get the prostitute? Why do we not want to leave the church to speak to the homeless guy in the street? See, we're so quick to get caught up in day-to-day -day life that I really don't think we understand what he did on the cross. Exactly. Amen. And one of the, I think one of the issues is we, we got this late mentality. You know, the Bible says we're a fisherman of men. We go in the ocean, but we want to stay in the lake. We want to go in the church. Can, 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 can I give you what he gave me? Give him I love gave, the fish. I love it. <laughs> God, God said, if you notice, the disciples never fish with a hook. Nope. Because if you fish, and if you're a fisherman, you know that when you fish with a hook or you fish with a lure, you're trying to catch certain type of fish. Mm. Mm -hmm. But if you throw the net, God help me. Because if you throw the net, he yeah. won't whosoever will, will. get Woo! caught in the net. I did not know Come that. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. So 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 many times we we want the cars in the parking lot, and when people see the cars in the parking lot, they'll look at the type of cars in the parking lot to determine whether or not they're gonna go to that church. Woo! Good Lord. And they'll pass by it because it's not the the, the doors, the uh, the parking lot is not full or 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 the cars in the parking lot or, or raggedy cars or whatever. You know, people will look at the outer appearance of of the church and, and determine whether or not they want to go in and get what's in there. But God gave the, the disciples a, a net mentality. A net for mentality. whosoever will come in this place so so they can be saved, so they can be caught in this net and learn this learn this new lifestyle that Jesus Christ has, has given his life for. As you as you just said, <laughs> the appearance of the church, God Ooh. just spoke to him. Man. See, we so quick to want to go speak to the one that's dressed a certain way. Come mm. on, brother. That's we, right. so, we so quick to go speak to the man in McDonald's that looked like he a businessman. And we that's over, right. There we, we, we go. Over, we overlook the young boy in the corner that you know is on some type of drug because he looks twisted. You so quick to run to the man that don't look like he need no help. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go take time to give help to the one that needs it. That's right. See, in my addiction, if I wouldn't have had people that was willing to make a true sacrifice to come speak to me come and on, to come brother. minister to me, I wouldn't be where I was. It ain't doing them no good to minister to my mom and daddy. That's they right. love the Lord. That's right. So so going to minister to the ones that you Woo! know love the Lord, you come ain't on. helping the community. Come on. What you're That's doing right. is, whether you believe it or not, you're still being selfish because it's all about what you want to do mm -hmm. to make it easier on you to make everything in life about you. Because, see, when we become selfish, Selfless, we listen to what God says, like you said, like you did, uh, Pastor Patrick, mm -hmm. about coming and, and bringing us here. See, if you wanted to be selfish, you would have just kept walking by the table. That's right. That's right. But see, Amen. so many people want to worry about a time thing. Oh, I got to get home to watch the football game. Oh, I got to do this. See, if God brings you to it, he going to bring you through it. So if he gives you an opportunity to speak to someone, you, you don't even understand that it might not even be for you. That's right. See, we so many, right. we so many Come times, on, man. we so many times want to get the blessing God gives us, mm. but and we so quick to forget the blessing might not even be for me. That's because right. I got a one a real another short little testimony. I was in Outback Steakhouse, been fundraising all day. I got three guys with me. They tatted up. We, you know, be if you look at us from the natural, we look like a bunch of hardcore thugs. <laughs> and God tells me, go pray for this little girl in a wheelchair. I said, God, you crazy? Her daddy loud would have blow my head off. You know, I'm in Outback. With three other grown men, we look like a bunch of hoodlums, really. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I go over there, I said, y'all mind if I pray? They said, yeah. So I prayed for the little girl. When we go to pay our bill, the lady, my waiter said, there's a note in there. They wrote me a note. Our bill was $102. They paid it, right? Wow. Now, if I wasn't where I was spiritually, That's right. I would have overlooked the blessing. Man. Because, That's see, right. that blessing wasn't Ooh. even for me. That's it was right. for my waitress who needed the $50 tip or my something. God. Come on. Because, see, when, when he blessed me and my bill was paid, mm -hmm. if I was living by the world standard, I would have kept my money uh -huh. and left. Went on. Uh -huh. That's right. So what I did was I gave this lady a $50 tip. She couldn't even hardly function. And in that moment, God says, see? Your obedience wasn't for you. That's right. It was for that lady. <laughs> By you being obedient, you got blessed. But in, in order, when I bless you, you was able to bless her. See, Ooh. so many times the church wants to take the blessing and keep it. 
Mm. What's the benefit of becoming mm. free and delivered if I can't give it to the next person stuck? That's right. Man. You can't keep it not unless you give it away. That's Come on. The only way we can do it. I, I hope I hope that people in the radio land listening. You know, we got estimate estimating. We got to get what? out of the people pleasing business. Come what on, we need brother. To do. And get out of the people. Get out of the you business. You know what? Come on, lady told Come me on, one time. She said the only <laughs> thing that you can leave here on earth that's worth anything is your legacy of how you lived your life and how you served the Lord. Come on now. It ain't no money, no cars, no land, or nothing that you can leave your children that's worth anything more than your legacy. That's right. And then what is our legacy going to be? What is it? We're going to be people-pleasing business. We're going to have a God suit on all the time and think we all that. <laughs> that ain't where it's at. That simply ain't where it's at. We got to get out of the people. See, what, what, what you think about me ain't none of my business whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And what everybody else thinks about me ain't none of my business. So when I learn that what everybody think about me ain't none of my business, then I can get out of that selfish, self-centered <laughs> way, and I can get out of my head and say, I don't care what they think, I'm going to go do this anyway. That's, that's when you step out and become a real woo, disciple of God. Right. Come, Come on, right brother. That's right. Good grace of life. I got to say something on faith, and then I'm, then I'm I guess if we're done, we're done. But I got to say this. Go ahead, brother. Go see, ahead. See, what we, mm. what we, what, what also that God's been dealing with them, see, faith isn't trusting in God, when the situation's working, That's, come on now. <laughs> faith is trusting in God when you don't see it working. <laughs> see, right. if I would have put my faith in the doctor, we would have gave up on my mom in 2016. Ooh, That's come right. on now. But That's see, right. when God says He's a way maker, wow. He's a miracle worker. Come on, he's now. a promise keeper. Mm. You can take that to the bank and cash it. Amen. Because see, <laughs> as the doctor says, she wouldn't live. We knew He was a way maker. We knew he was a promise keeper. And he told my mama, he said, you gave your son back to me years ago. I'm going to let you see him do right. Mm, that's right. But see, if my mom didn't spend time with the Lord, she would have never been able to hear what he was telling. That's right. See, we want to spend time with the Lord when our situations look like it ain't like, like it's not working Come out. Come on now. But see, how can you expect your situation to work out when it don't work out? Or if it don't look like it can, if you don't know the one that's control of the situation. That's right. Woo. See, so many times we, we want to tell we want to tell God how big our storm is. And say, instead of saying storm, my God's bigger than you. Amen. See, it don't, it don't matter what my storm looks like because my God is bigger than any storm I'm facing. That's right. Because, see, Amen. if we really understand that we have the power and the battle's already been won, we would walk into every situation with confidence knowing that it's already fought. But, Ooh, see, but come see on we, 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 we want to we wanna <laughs> say we got victory when the situation is small and we can control. That's right. <laughs> see, we want to say victory when we got an $85 power bill due and we got 400 in the bank. Right. And mm. we want to walk in power and authority because we got a way to pay it. Because we can see it. But what do we do when we can't but, see it? Come on. Come on, brother. What, 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 do you, what do you do when you lose your job and you don't see no way? What do you do? Because I know for me in my past before I really came here and said, God, I'll do whatever. And I seen him move and continue to move and moved on my behalf. And, 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 and when the court is telling me there's no way. And I see, I see God take a 10-year sentence and wipe it. But see, wipe it. I seen him do the same thing. <laughs> Both of y'all got the same testimony. And, and, do the same thing. And, go and, ahead, Joe. And, and, and so it's like you know we 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 go through day to day life. We go through day to day life, Ooh, and, and it's easy. But mm. what but what do we do? What do we do when 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 we, we had an option when my mom got sick of cancer? Oh, that's for the enemy. No, see, we have to understand that even though she's got cancer. She's going to heaven. That's, That's right. right. See, she can go to heaven That's with right. cancer because she's healed in the in the spirit. That's right. But you can't go to heaven if you don't know the Lord. That's right. So it don't matter what we got on earth. Come on. It matters what's inside of me. So if if God's inside of me and I've accepted the Lord as, as, as Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I'm going to heaven. It don't matter what this flesh looks like. That's because, right. Because, see, God used this situation of my mom to minister to so many people because when they say, oh, I, I can't believe you in a red wheelchair, the first thing my mom says is i can go to heaven in this well in this red wheelchair we where go. can you go that's right because see we, we, we so ready to take our situation and allow it to get us off course when if you stand on his word 
Like I said earlier, Romans 8 says all things work to good to those who love the Lord. That's right. To his purpose. All means cancer. All means drug addiction. That's right. All means pornography. All means lust. Every, all means, come on means now. everything. Every, so means if all. everything works out for good, Ooh. everything I've been through is for my good. See, it took me 18 years of turmoil by my own decision for all that negative to turn good. Mm, but God. so many times we want to give up when it gets hard. We want to believe the enemy because we hadn't spent enough time in our prayer closet to understand that the enemies come against us. Because, see, as you begin to spend time in the prayer closet, you will understand that if God for you, who can be against you? Come on, it, don't, it don't matter. It More than conquerors. <laughs> it don't matter what comes against you. You know that he has a purpose and a destiny for your life, and it won't matter. You'll be able to pray. The Bible says in James 1, count it all joy. Mm, that's right. See, see as, 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 as people, what we want to do is we only want to thank God when everything's going good. But what are we doing when the situation Woo. looks impossible? Do we stand up and say, God, I thank you for my mom having cancer because I know where she's going. What do we do? We quit to turn on God when, when, when we can't pay our power bill. What are you going to do when you get sick? You want to blame God when you don't understand. See, we want to use certain scriptures for our benefit when it's beneficial. Come on, brother. <laughs> See, we, we, we don't want to believe Genesis to Revelation. Oh, we, want to pick, we want to pick one scripture that's beneficial to that day. Come on. But see, but see, once the next day comes, we don't want to stand on that scripture. Uh -huh. We Come want on, to pick brother. a different one. We only want to pick and choose what works for us that day. That's and right, we man. wonder why we have a lost and dying world because we want to be Bible pickers. Mm, cherry see, pickers. See, we we, 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 we want to pick a scripture like we pick in the lottery. <laughs> see, see, if you only needed one scripture to Woo! go through life, this Bible wouldn't be but one scripture. one scripture. This Bible's filled with so many things. And, and it says, though, you need the word of God. So the word of God is more than one. So therefore, I'm I still can't understand why we want to pick and choose one scripture to, to, to go through life. Mm. If that was the case, you wouldn't have to be in church for five minutes. The <laughs> man would read 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and said, If any man in Christ is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all come new. There ain't nothing else to listen to. But the thing is, there's so much in this word, but we don't want to take we don't want to take the time to read it. We don't want to sacrifice an hour of NFL football. Mm -hmm. We don't want to <laughs> sacrifice getting up at 5.30 in the morning to, 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 to spend 30 minutes with the Lord. Come on, we, brother. We want to get up and say, Lord, we thank you for waking up. And then when we get to work and our boss comes at us sideways, we ready to quit, but we don't, we for totally forgot to thank God that my boss was a prick because if you can go into every situation looking for good, you'll understand that it really ain't your boss that you don't like. You see something in him that's a reflection of you. Mm. Woo! <laughs> see, the only time we want to get in the mirror is when it's time to shave. Woo! Come on. We don't, we don't want to get in the mirror and really look at what's going on with our life. Yes, sir. See, so many, so so many times we want to we want to look at our brother and say, "Oh, he offended me." No, you offended because the same thing you seeing him do wrong, you do wrong when nobody's looking. That's Come right, on now, right. uh, my God, man, you done burned down the studio. I'm yes. gonna call the fire department. <laughs> Let it burn. <laughs> and y'all mean to tell me y'all don't want to go to life changing, man? You know what? I'm blessed, brother. I, I am so blessed, man. And I'm glad, boy, I thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord. You always seen a you always seen a ram in the bush. Because that's what we need today. And this is what we need to hear. Amen. We need to hear men that was out on the street, was out there in the battlefield fighting fighting the war for Satan, and then God bringing them on in and see the change that God has done. We got three examples. Three examples. Some people say, well, uh, God of the power of God ain't moving. It's moving. You just got to yes, get up there behind and look and see if it's moving. Amen. And what you say is so powerful, man, because you got the churches here. And I always, and people say you always talk. Because the reason why, you know the reason I talk about the church? Because the church need to be in the position to feed the flock. That's Amen. right. They Amen. ain't in the position to feed the flock. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, they go in there and give a good. And the problem is that we are so self-righteous, Holy Ghost, tongue talkers, worship praises, praisers. We'll go out there and walk past a homeless person. A person on the road, a person that's 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 in poverty and overlook them. How many people do you pass on the way to church? That's homeless. Amen. That don't know God. So, but so. yet, but yet at the same time though, we'll get in church and praise and hallelujah. But then when somebody get in the, in the church that don't look like us, like you said, I don't 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 portray like us. We get the stank face. Right. And it make them feel uncomfortable. 
Because they don't want to come in the house of God. Well, what did you look like before God changed you? Amen. Amen. What Amen. was your action? What was your way that God came before he took you? Because I know I was filthy rags and dirty. Man, I had a porn addiction. I had an attitude. I talked all kind of way. I would treat my family all kind of way. So God had to change me. And I was a man of God. I was in the church preaching. Mm. I was in the church doing God's will. And sit up there had all that junk and garbage. But God said, because I love you. Yep. That's right. Because I love you. Because I saw my son died on the cross. I heard a lady say, where was Jesus at when my son died? Son died. And then God said, the same place I was when my son was crucified on cross for your soul. Right there. Right there. But no different. When those right there. Amen. Woo, boy. Amen. Go ahead. Oh, you better amen. take over. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, 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 so the Lord showed me this about revival Woo. because you were talking oh, about how, 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 how we look at people today, how we pick and choose. You oh, know, we talked about the, 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 the fishing techniques. So what happened to real revival? Mm. You what know, happened I, to I, it? I mean, just 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 my short time in ministry here, uh, um, I, I'm, I hadn't seen a real revival since I gave my life to Christ. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by real revival. Real revival is not so much as the people that's already in church. Hey Amen. Right. Come on now. You okay? So real revival is the people that need it. The people who are lost, the people who who don't know God, the people who are doing all the things against God, mm. who who, may, who who haven't repented, the ones that don't know that they are going to hell or don't have an understanding of it. We don't go get those people anymore. We call revival really a a inspirational message. That's right. Mm. Revival, yeah. revive. But the word vibe, actually, you know, we've got a vibe, and when we lose our vibe. We got to get it back. That's right. that's right. And that's what we need to do is go out there and revive people. And that's what revival's about. We that's gotta, what it's about. Exactly. But, but 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 we have to go and get the ones that nobody else think can make it. And so so you looking at Joe. Joe is a great example, I'm telling you. Because so many times, I heard an old preacher tell me a long time ago, he said, your next preacher is over there on the corner, drunk, mm -hmm. doped up. High mm. and everything else. That's where your next preach at. That's where he at. Because he has gone through something. He can tell you how both sides are. And exactly. that's that's why Satan is so much, you know, on, on a person's trail. Because there's an anointing and a gift in that person that Satan doesn't want to be released. Exactly. So if you're going through Come something, on. if you're going through some type of an addiction, I don't care what type of addiction it is. It could be you just eating yourself to death and not eat and, and, and have, a, have bad health. There is help. There's help. There's, there's help through the word of God. And what's really powerful to me is they use the scripture. Come on, brother. <laughs> the Lord Ooh. told me a while back, he said, Who, he asked me a question. He said, who stole the power of God's word? Mm. And the power of God's word is in his word and not by adding or taking anything away. Come on, brother. So That's it's right. powerful. You, it's powerful all by itself. And they've proven it, this, that, that the word of God is powerful all by itself because it's freeing people that have that are truly giving their life to Christ, coming with a broken and contrite spirit, wanting to be healed, wanting to be restored, wanting to be renewed through the word of God. If you want it, I promise you, I feel the anointing in this place. Life yeah. changes outreach. I really want want to be a part of this thing i got to talk to you after this because the lord showed me and, and we one year in the first thing he told me he said find you a good discipleship program learn it before you implement it and i'm here i'm open for y'all to, to teach me something in the in the discipleship program because i want to implement this in this city amen and i i tell you what man it, it this is god because god opened door for y'all man because i got another pastor got this pastor and um I'm going to talk with, you know, radio stations and, and for us, you know, sponsor and everything, see what we can do. Because this is something that's that's so profound, so powerful. Listening to Brother Joe has really, I mean, it blessed my heart. I'm lit, man. I'm, I'm lit. I am too. I'm, trying, I'm, I'm just mean, trying to be reserved. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest I, with you. Man, they I, right I, here on the way home. I'm they telling you, like man, it. you should feel, you should give. I mean, I'm not praising you. I'm praising you being a vessel that God can use you Amen. like you can. Amen. Because, man, when you got men around you, and people don't understand, it ain't easy. Pride goes a long way. Yes, sir. People have pride that they deal with. I, I seen a man that sit up there and let his family fall because he didn't want to confess that he lied and let pride destroy his whole family. Wow. Because that pride set in. Mm -hmm. The Bible said God said he resists the pride. Mm-hmm. Give you know grace what I'm saying? to the humble. But grace to the humble. I, I, when I was down there, 
And I'm going to tell you, man, when I, true revival is when I went to Walmart, sat down on the ground with a homeless guy, me and him sat down and ate together, and I listened to that man say how that pride made him lose his, lose his home, his job, and his family. All because of he had pride that he won't want, didn't want to do this. And he said God was just knocking out his door, knocking at his heart. Mm -hmm. And he rejected God. And God had to bring it down. He lost everything, his family and all. And when I got the chance to sit there and minister that brother, people looking at me, oh, what are you doing down in here? I said, you know what? He'll have a greater relationship with God than you will. You got everything. That's Amen. Right. Mm. When Amen. you was talking about God was knocking, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish with this because I know we're short on time. But Yeah, we got eight, uh, about eight minutes. Okay. One other thing that God, God's dealt me on a bunch of things, but I really think the church and, 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 and us so-called believers, I think we mistake what the wrath of God really is. Mm. Because, <laughs> see, the wrath of God is really turning me over to my own desires. Yep. Ooh, come on. Because, see, see for, 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 for so long, I wanted to take things for granted. And so there comes a point to where, see, when I was in so many other programs and I was making compromise, what did God do? If I were to try to tell most people in church it was the wrath of God in my life, they would say, no, nah, he ain't come back yet. But see, we got it mistaken. Mm -hmm. The wrath of God was he gave me what I wanted. That's right. That's right. He didn't create me to be a robot. Mm. He created me to have free will and choice. And see, the, 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 the issue is we want to make a choice when we're in a situation. Mm. We want to serve God <laughs> with stipulations. That's we want really God in a, cookie, in a cookie jar. Mm. And every, every time we need him, we want to be able to put our hand in there and pull him out. Pull him, wow. <laughs> but we don't want to pull him my out. God, my God. We don't want to pull him out when we wake up today and we don't understand that we're alive. Because, see, I want to challenge y'all that everybody can hear. Amen. What would you do if all you had today is what you thank God for yesterday? Wow. Because, see, it don't matter if I thank him for the food, the job, my wife, my kids. Did we really take time to say, God, I thank you for waking me up today. If I don't thank you for life, everything else ain't going to come. That's right. That's right. So it's like, what are we really thanking God for? Are we just thanking him for <clears throat> encounters? Are we thanking him that we can pay the power bill? Or are we thanking him that today, God, you woke me up. Now, where's my opportunity to minister? See, we want opportunities when it's convenient. And I keep going back to sacrifice because God has been dealing with me on it, too. What is a sacrifice if there's no pain? Mm. Right. There ain't, it, right. It's not right, a sacrifice. Right. If that's I can right. go through McDonald's and pay for my person's order behind me because I got $10 million, that's not a sacrifice. That's not a sacrifice. A sacrifice is paying for their food when you don't have enough but for yours. That's right. Because, see, we get so twisted on natural food, but if we would spend time in our prayer closet with him, we would be so spiritually strong that we could go without a meal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can't, uh -huh. we can't wait to get That's the good, McDonald's bro. and get a cheeseburger. <laughs> but we want to say, oh, I sacrificed because I didn't watch but three quarters of the football game. No, you got home late and you couldn't watch but three quarters of the game. <laughs> because, see, if you sacrificed, you wouldn't even have cut the TV on to watch the game. You would have opened your word and read your word the whole time the football game was going. That's wow. And you know, it's funny you say that because when I went, before I went my trip to Africa, I had to come up with $3,000. I didn't have that money. You know what I'm saying? But God told me, he said, trust me. As your day-to-day -day life, you trust me. You know what God ended up doing? Giving me $3,400. Woo! Come on. $3,400 to go on a trip. Boy, and man, I tell you what, when I say God blessed, I mean, I had people write me checks all because I trusted him because God said, I'm sending you down there for a purpose. Now, people say, oh, you went to Africa, good. No, it wasn't because I was waiting for my family. It was one week that I didn't get a chance to talk to my family because there was no cell phone service, no nothing. And it, and it, and I, and it, it just, it was chaos, you know. I, can't, I don't know how my wife doing, you know. She home with the kids. It's, you know, I know I got family there, but ain't nothing like me being there. You know, anything can happen. Water bus, what you know. Right. But God said, put your trust in me. And he had to give me a peace. You know, he had to give me a peace, man. And I, and I thank God for that, man. And I, and I just... Listen to you. Well, listen, it's, it's 826. We're going to let everybody get around and say something before we go ahead and shut it down. I, I tell you, man, it's, it's been an honor. I mean, it's been an honor, guys. I mean, it, I'm blessed. Brother Joe, man, all I can say, brother, is stay at fire. Now, you know, the devil, gonna, he going to attack you after this now because a lot of times you come on the red. What you put out today, oh, he waiting on you. But I, I, you ain't got nothing to worry about because, bro, with all that fire in you, you're going you gonna to burn it with his own fire. 
So I'm going to start from here. Y'all go ahead and say your last words, and we're going to get ready to <laughs> land this plane. I don't know. Uh, I just want to say thank you again for having us on the show, man. And uh, what other place can you think of that's free for a year that you get to be in the presence of the Lord for a whole year? <laughs> Woo. It's amazing. It is. Woo. I mean, we see stuff. We do. We do praise and worship mm -hmm. every day, <laughs> and every week, man. I'm telling you, we see stuff every week. It's powerful. Come on out and try it out. There's 12 centers nationwide. I just want to thank you, Patrick. I want to thank. I want to thank the Lord. But most importantly, I'm believing that 2000 and, uh, 2018 going into 19 is going to be the year of the last drug addict. I'm believing in Come God to now. move so strong over this next year that we won't have to need a program because church is going to break out everywhere Come and the on, whole world is going to become free. Amen. And I want to I want to say thanks to my mom and dad for always being behind me and sacrifice of prayer time. Love you, mom and dad. Patrick, I, uh, uh, Pastor Isaac and Pastor Riley, thank you again for, for letting us be here. And one thing that I want to I want to challenge everybody out there is the same thing. Uh, so a boy named Paul. He did every day. He sacrificed himself every morning. He crucified himself every morning. And at nighttime, he took an inventory of himself, and he asked God to show him what he could do better the next day. And this was a design that he, that God uh, gave to him for, for, for living. And mm -hmm. if we do that, and if we sacrifice ourselves in the morning time, and we ask God to forgive us at nighttime, we're as clean as we're going to get. When we put our feet on the floor the next morning, we are clean as we're going to be all day long. And if we do that every day, then we stay out of danger. Amen, Pastor. Amen. So, 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 uh, Patrick, uh, Pastor, Pastor Isaac, he, he, what he did, he texted me and let me know that we had some guests coming on here today, and um, I left my house with an expectation. <laughs> me too, brother. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Mm. And guess what? I got more than I expected. Mm. God bless you guys, man. Um, I, I definitely got to get with you after this, man. I, 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 my, my life has been changed. Mine's too, brother. I just got another notch. All right. This is the end of our show called In the Last Days. I am the host of the show, RPI Radio Pastor Ivy. Tune in next Tuesday at 7 p.m. on In the Last Days. Get out and go to church somewhere. Hallelujah.